What is back pressure? Back pressure is a flow control mechanism used in software systems, particularly in stream processing and messaging systems to prevent overwhelming a system with too much data or too many requests. It is essential for maintaining system stability, performance, and resource management by controlling the rate at which data is produced and consumed. Let's talk about how back pressure works. Let's delete everything here. Back pressure works by um, signaling up upstream components to slow down or stop producing data when the downstream components are enabled to process data at the same rate. This helps to balance the load and prevent system overload resource exhaustion and potential failures let's talk about the key concept the key concept mechanisms the first thing we have buffering temporary storage of data in buffers to handle very um, variations in processing rates between uh, producers and consumers if buffers fill up back pressure mechanisms can be triggered number two we have um, rate limiting controlling the rate at which requests or data are sent to ensure that the receiving component is not overwhelmed number three we have flow control protocols Protocols that manage the flow of data between components such as TCP flow control which adjust the rate of data transmission based on network conditions and receiver capabilities. And number four, we have reactive streams. Programming paradigm and um, it's basically a programming paradigm for in synchronous um, stream processing with non-blocking back pressure, it defines a set of interfaces and methods for hanging back pressure in reactive system. Let's talk about why back pressure is important. The first thing it will be the prevent prevents overload. It protects the system from being overwhelmed by too much data, which can lead to crashes, performance degradation, um, degradation and resource uh, uh, exhaustion. And number two, maintains stability. Helps to maintain a stable and predictable system by balancing the load and ensuring that all components operate within their capacity and number three improves performance enhances overall system performance by ensuring that components are not constantly dealing with ex um, excessive load leading to more efficient uh, processing and number four we have resource management Ensures efficient use of resources such as a memory and CPU by preventing excessive buffering and processing um, overhead. Let's talk about the implementation of the back pressure. Back pressure can be implemented at various levels in system, including network protocols, message uh, messaging systems, and application level data streams. The first thing we have net, net, uh, network protocols. TCP uses a built-in flow control mechanism to manage back pressure by adjusting the sender's data rate based on the receiver's buffer capacity. Number two, we have messaging systems. Systems like Apache Kafka and uh, RabbitMQ implement back pressure by allowing consumers to control the rate of message consumption and signaling producers to slow down when necessary. 
Number three, we have reactive streams. Libraries and frameworks such as reactive extensions and project uh, reactor provide tools for handling back pressure in reactive programming modules. So let's make some let's talk about some example use cases. The first thing we will talk about data streaming applications. In implementations that process real time data streams such as video streaming or IoT data in in ingestion, back pressure mechanisms ensure that data uh, producers do not overwhelm the processing pipeline. Number two, microservices communication. In microservices architecture, pack pressure can prevent one service from overloading another with too many requests, ensuring smooth inter-service communication. And number three, APIs and web services. APIs can implement back pressure to handle high request rates, ensuring that back uh, backend services are not overwhelmed and can maintain performance and availability. So back pressure is a critical concept for designing robust, scalable, and efficient software systems by controlling the flow of data and requests. Back pressure mechanism help maintain system stability, prevent resource exhaustion, uh, exhaustion, and improve overall performance. Implementing back pressure requires careful consideration of system architecture, data flow patterns, and systems requirement of the application to ensure that all component can handle uh, varying loads efficient, um, efficiently and effectively. So that's it for this video and see you in the future.